Hello, I wanted to do a video on the Odin programming language for quite some time. I just didn't know how to do it, really. Uh, it's uh, quite challenging to, to do a video like this because, of course, you have no idea what people actually want to know, what they want to hear, uh, and so on. But I figured we would take a look at what Odin is, what they say that Odin is, the creators or creator, and uh, what it is to me, what some of the aspects that I think are interesting. And then we'll go over actually some of the specifics of, well, how to write Odin code and so on. I'm going to be, be, be making this a series on Odin and we're going to explore different aspects of this, like uh, making small programs, uh, solving problems in Odin, specific patterns that might show up, and also trying to take a look at lower level programming through the lens of Odin. And what I mean by lower level programming is simply, of course, it's not very common for us to use low level languages anymore. We don't usually uh, sit down and write the actual assembly instructions for specific uh, architectures and so on. So we tend to use high level languages, right? But this obviously is a spectrum at the end of the day. And uh, we'll get into a little bit more what this is, but I would characterize Odin as a lower level language that retains control over what's going to happen to a larger degree than some other languages. It's a lot like C, except we get to have uh, some improvements that you, you would want in C generally speaking, uh, and so on. So let's look briefly at what are the, what's the Odin webpage saying, right? The data-oriented language for sane software development. These are, this is a big claim, of course. Data-oriented is pretty objective. What they mean by this is simply that Odin is capable of very specifically and very uh, accurately describing how data should look, which means that we can actually do things that are good for the processor and so on. We will get to what that means in a later video on that thing, on uh, cache lines and things like this. Rest assured, it's uh, it's simply a way of saying we have some level of control and insight and yeah, not a lot of overhead from Odin with regards to certain things. Sane software development, this is of course a completely subjective. We're going to kind of ignore that for now. I agree, uh, but you know, programming done right, I would say uh, Odin has a good claim to procedural programming done right. Uh, it is a general purpose procedural language. It is unapologetically procedural. We do not get a lot of, well, there, for example, there are <laughs> no real FP style uh, things, I would argue, in, in Odin uh, that you can't get from, for example, C or the like. Generally speaking, I would say you simply don't write that type of code in Odin and it's fine. The procedural style is very well executed in Odin, I would say. So Odin is a general purpose programming language, procedural programming language with distinct typing. So it's strongly typed, strongly statically typed. And distinct typing here, I, I suppose what they are actually saying is simply what you see is what you get. You don't, you don't actually get these uh, implicit conversions and coercions uh, from one type to another. So for example, if we are writing C, for example, uh, basically everything can be turned into a number and you don't really have to ask for it. It just sort of happens. Sometimes you want that and sometimes you don't. I think generally speaking, languages have learned over time that you definitely want to ask for it. You generally speaking, do not want to just have it happen. Odin is on that line of thinking, right? You ask for casts, you ask for, you ask for conversions. You can ask for potentially risky uh, casts and so on via the transmute keyword, which regards one piece of memory as a type that it might not safely be regarded as. And this is when we know what we're doing, right? So we have control and so on. So it's built for high performance, modern systems and data oriented programming. And we've already kind of gone over briefly what data oriented here actually means. Uh, modern systems means we have access to things like SIMD and so on, array programming, meaning we can in fairly reasonable ways uh, talk about processor and in, in CPU instructions that utilize the processor to its fullest extent, extent uh, a modern processor. And you don't require magic to do so. High performance follows from uh, these things. I would argue. Odin is the C alternative for the joy of programming. And I think the C alternative line here or phrasing is important. Odin is not a C replacement. It's a C alternative. You will not replace C with Odin. It's just not feasible. In fact, there is no actual replacement for C. You can have an alternative to C, but C is C. There's simply no way you can catch up with so, so many years of uh, portability and so on that you get from C. Uh, there's no language that actually does that. It is simply not the thing, I would say, generally speaking. I might be wrong. If you know a language that has the same portability 
uh, and so on as he and is as widespread, I would love to hear about it. Um, I just don't think that it's actually, you cannot actually replace C. You can only produce alternatives that might point to a better future. So the olden principles, uh, simplicity. I think this was a, this one is big. Simplicity is of course very, it's a nebulous word. What does it mean? We actually can look here a little bit more at the details and we can talk about readability, scalability and or orthogonality of concepts. This phrasing uh, is perhaps a little bit strange. I would say, I would say it like this, right? Odin is a small language. It doesn't overstep its bounds. It does not rely on magic to solve problems. Somewhat controversially, I would say, and again, this is not, this is actually not me speaking for Odin or anything like this. My view on this is that Odin is a language for people who, who think that the problem with programming is not writing code. Uh, writing code is something you do to solve your problem. And writing code is not some big punishment that we need to do as little as possible of in every circumstance. If we do need to write a few extra lines uh, and so on to solve something, that is fine. The point is readability. The point is for that solution to be understandable tomorrow, next week, next month, in half a year or several years, right? And for that solution to not be constantly in a chiseled away at in the in an attempt to sort of abstract, abstract, abstract with fancy features. Uh, a macro in Odin would be a ridiculous notion. That's kind of how you can view this. Of course, there are languages where macros are definitely used. That's fine for them. Odin is not that. If one of your biggest issues is, oh, I have to write code, I don't think that Odin is for you. But I can, I can almost guarantee that once you start using Odin, the problem that you have is simply solving your problem solving your domain, encoding the problem is going to be the issue, right? Actually solving the problem, not describing the transformations that, you know, are part of the solution. Because all problem solving, all engineering is really just transformations of data. Odin will definitely allow you to describe the transformations of data in a very nice, simple, straightforward way. It doesn't allow you necessarily to the same degree as some other languages to sort of do fancy hiding of a lot of these things. Um, and that's not really the point of the language. Having control, having insight from reading the code uh, at a surface level, I would say. And yeah, having control and insight as to what's going on from just a source level. That is, these are the two most important things, I think, in Odin. It's not really even about high performance necessarily to me, but th that also comes into it, right? We should be able to look at a piece of code and say, this is obviously not doing something crazy, right? Either logic-wise or performance-wise. That, uh, that is one of the things that I personally view as upsides of Odin. The code, what's going to happen is sort of, the code is transparent in a way, right? It's not opaque. We don't, we're not wondering when we look, look at some piece of code, what's actually going on. And of course, I have videos on Haskell on this channel. And I, I love Haskell, I really do. But I would characterize Haskell as one of the languages that is the polar opposite to Odin. Haskell is a language for people who, well, they might enjoy writing Haskell, but they work very hard to write less code all the time. And um, I will be honest that I'm not entirely sure that that's the most important aspect of programming, right? It, it is fundamentally pretty unimportant in the grand scheme of things. And of course, we've all heard the statistics, uh, more lines of code, more bugs, and so on. And this is uh, probably true, but there is a factor in there that I think people are ignoring. Having a logic bug in Haskell is extremely easy because, well, a lot of stuff is simply obfuscated all over the place. Not because people want to write obfuscated code, but because the things that they do obfuscate code and so on. It makes it very opaque. I was telling a friend recently that there are certain parts of the Haskell standard library that I, I don't, I can't read. I don't, I don't actually understand what they're doing unless I spend on the order of, let's say, 15 minutes understanding a, a function, right? And um, I can tell you that I've stumbled upon zero cases in that, of that variety in Odin, right? And I think this is an important aspect of code. Yeah, we all know the thing that, you know, the truism, that uh, we read code more than we write it. Uh, and maybe it's time to take this to heart, kind of. And yeah, a high performance. It's about keeping performance. Making a change, a seemingly innocuous change, should not necessarily make it very likely that you're uh, screwing up performance. 
At the same time, we want control that allows us to actually, when we do want to make a change, that should be able to impact performance to a great degree, to a big degree, right? A large degree. That means we need low level control of our memory layout, memory management, and so on. We do a lot of this stuff by simply saying, well, first of all, uh, structures are not rearranged in Odin. You have control. You decide if they're packed or not and so on. We use custom allocators to talk about where memory comes from, when it's allocated and so on. This gives you a very large degree of control over when things are being done and so on and allows us to actually pretty confidently say, hey, I'm only talking to the OS at the beginning of my program, for example. I do not need to do any syscalls when it's running and so on. We can look at a piece of code because of the simplicity and control of Odin. We can look at a piece of code and say confidently that Oh, there is no function in this loop that uh, allocates memory, right? We can see this fairly simply and so on. And I think this is a great, this is a, a really, really nice aspect of Odin as a language that it shares with, for example, Zig. Odin is for modern systems. And again, we looked at, we talked about this briefly, SIMD and so on, array programming, uh, meaning we can execute an operation on an entire array at the same time. It has support for re rearranging types so that they are structures of arrays instead of arrays of structures and so on for better memory uh, access patterns and so on. We can do this automatically. A lot like uh, Zig does, though I think Odin was probably first with this. I'm not entirely sure. Joy of programming, again, is subjective. I will say this, that I agree. And I think that there's a good chance that, that you agree if you give Odin uh, a chance. Uh, I think it's a really really nice language uh, fundamentally well designed and we'll get to the sort of how things connect together in later videos in this series but uh, i would say one of the things that characterizes odin for me is that it is well thought out right it's not a collection of features it is more like features that come together they work together so in ways that make for a nice pattern of programming right uh, a, a nice process the act of programming in odin really does feel like it makes sense uh, in many ways. The code that you write makes sense to you after some time even. The solutions that you end up with, uh, I would say have the characteristic that they simply do the thing, right? They don't, the, there's not a lot of infrastructure, generally speaking, I would say, around solutions in Odin, unless they're warranted. And of course, this it depends on the programmer. Certainly the community does not produce these, generally speaking. There are no really, there aren't a lot of uh, odd ideas about how you should write Odin in, in ways that sort of just follow some kind of Bible about, well, we need pure functions this, pure functions that, and so on. Instead, the policies are, policies are pretty clear. Clarity is one of the most important things. Readability, using simple tools to solve the problem, not making taxonomies out of everything. We'll see this with the module system, for example, the package system rather, not making big type hierarchies and so on. Odin lacks certain features that I would argue complicate a lot of languages and simply has other features that simplify, for example, memory management and so on. But yeah, so that was a brief sort of very, let's say, hands-off introduction to Odin. I also want to add here that Odin is and has been used in production for quite some time. If we look at this video, we can actually see a program, a product rather, that is using Odin. Let's see here. There you go. And uh, so all of the fire effects in this trailer or whatever, this series of trailers or whatever, uh, are created by Embergen. This is a a product made by Jenga FX, um, and the creator of Odin works at Jenga FX, um, and Odin has been used productively there to create these this tool. Right, this is used in special effects in games. So that's kind of where the heritage heritage or not heritage, but the actual kind of line of thinking, the spirit of Odin comes from, it should support this, right? It just so happens to be a delightful language. And I would argue, if you don't have performance requirements, Odin is still one of the nicest language, languages I've used ever. It has, if it features some of the best error handling that I have used personally. And I wish other languages had this, higher level languages. Um, I wish Go had, um, the error handling of Odin. They could just slot that in completely. I would love it. Um, 
at this point, I honestly, I kind of wish all languages were just Odin um, with different sort of profiles, maybe. Right? Odin with a GC, if you're writing something a little bit uh, higher level or whatever, maybe it would be interesting. Um, but yeah, so I think this uh, is a very interesting language. And I really, really suggest that you, you come with me on this journey to, to see Odin, sort of the aspects of Odin, how it works, why it works uh, like it does, uh, how different solutions look in Odin. And we're going to be implementing small projects, slightly bigger projects and so on. Uh, some of these is because I simply want these tools uh, and so on. So I'll be creating them. And some of them are purely instructive and so on. So yeah, that's it for the kind of high-level intro to Odin. Let's go into some specifics. <laughs>